Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about access modifiers in Java. Now, access modifiers are basically keywords that we can give to the entities in our Java program. So things like variables or objects or classes. And it basically controls what other entities inside of our programs can access them. And this is a concept that's pretty central to Java. And if you really want to be a Java developer, you're going to have to have at least a decent understanding of how these different things work. So I'm going to give you guys an overview of access modifiers. We'll talk about what they do, what they don't do, and when you should use each one. So when I'm talking about access modifiers, I'm talking about the public, private, and protected keywords. So there's three keywords in Java that we can use with the different entities in our programs and they're public. Well, the main ones are public, private and protected. So you've probably seen if you've been following along with this course, I'm using these keywords all over the place. So over here in my just sort of like main class, I have public class app, public static void main. I'm using this public keyword. I also have a Java class set up over here. It's this song class. And basically this is just modeling a song inside of our program. It's like my song data type. And we have a title, an artist, and a length. And over here you see these are private. So private string title, private string artist, private int length. What does this mean? What do all these things mean? Well, here's the thing. Access modifiers, like I said, control what other entities in your Java program can access these different things. Now public is probably the most common, maybe not the most common, but at least the most basic to understand public basically means that anything can access it. So for example, I put public class song up here when I'm using this public keyword, it just means that any other entities, so that could be any other classes, any other methods inside of my Java program can access this class. Essentially, they know that this class exists and they can, you know, have access to it. And so if you don't care who has access to your class or to one of your variables or to one of your methods, you can just go ahead and throw that public keyword on it and you should be good to go. For example, over here on this class constructor, it's public song, right? This constructor is public. That means I can access this constructor. So basically I can create a song object. Over here in my app.java file, you'll see I'm creating a song holiday and it's just holiday by green day, right? Because that constructor is public, I'm able to call it. I'm able to create a new song. If I was to come over here though and change this from public to private, all of a sudden now I'm not going to have access to this constructor. So you'll see we're getting an error. It says the constructor is not visible. Now this brings me to our next thing, which is private. Private basically means that this entity. So in our case, this constructor is only accessible from inside of this class. So if I put the private keyword on here, only things inside of this class can access it. So let's change this back to public and you'll see now I'm able to create a song again because the constructor is public. Let's take another example. So, over here, I have these attributes set to private. So it's private string title. If I was to try to access this attribute directly from outside of this class. So for example, outside here, inside of my holiday object, if I was trying to say print it out. So let's say I was trying to print out the title of this song. I can't access it directly. So I can't say holiday dot title. I'm going to get an error over here and that's because the title attribute is set to private. So I'm not allowed to actually access it. If I was to come over here and change this to public now, I'll be able to access it all day. You can see here, we're not getting an error anymore and I could actually print it out onto the screen. So you see we're accessing this title directly and we can use public and private to control access. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll set all of these attributes equal to private and then they'll let people access these attributes using getters and setters. So down here I have these getters and setters. For example, I have this get title method. This is set to public, right? So I can call this get title method from over here. I can say get title that's public, right? And what the get title method does is it basically just returns the actual title. 
And this works because the song class, anything in the song class has access to this title attribute. Even though it's private, even though title is private, anything inside of the same class can access it. So this get title method works really well because another Java program that's outside of this class can call this and then we can just return the title to them. So it controls the access to that variable. So that's kind of like why getters and setters work. So just to review, private means only other Java inside of that class can access it. So if we have a private attribute, a private method, a private whatever, only other things inside of that same class have access to it. If I have something that's public, that means that any other Java code has access to it. Now there's actually a third type, there's a third modifier which is called protected. And protected is probably not something you're gonna be using too much as a beginner. Protected really comes in handy when you have large amounts of Java code. And protected essentially allows your Java attribute, your Java class, whatever, to be accessed only by other Java programs, classes, et cetera, inside the same package. Now a package in Java, you know, essentially is just a folder where we're storing all of the Java files um, that we wanna keep together. So a lot of times if you have a big Java project, you're gonna store similar Java files. So like Java files, Java classes, whatever, that are doing similar things inside of the same package. Um, and that, again, that's when you have like a lot of files and you really need to organize stuff. The protected keyword will only allow other Java attributes, Java entities inside of that same package to access it. So as you get more and more advanced with Java and you start making bigger and bigger programs, that protected keyword can come in handy because it'll only allow other Java classes, Java methods, Java anything inside of that same package to access that attribute, whatever. So that's sort of the three main types, public, private, and protected. And really the best way to wrap your head around these things is just to go around and play around with them. You know, play around with setting different things to public, setting different things to private, setting different things to protected, see how they work. But hopefully that clears some stuff up. At least now you have a basic understanding of what that public and that private keyword and then obviously that protected keyword as well are actually doing and what they mean. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.